Welcome to the West as we say goodbye to 1990 and hello to 1991. I'm Vicki Liviakis. On this New Year's edition, we're going to look into the future of the West and introduce you to some Westerners who are leading the way. We begin with a look at three daring Western men and their fantastic flying machines. Each hopes to design a car that will boldly go where none has gone before. Chokehold traffic, surface gridlock. It's a fact of life today that could be gone tomorrow. Get a good hard look at the cars of tomorrow. As awkward as these machines might seem, they are what inventors hope will revolutionize the way we travel. The concept of a car with wings has actually been kicking around for quite some time. Way back in the 50s, a guy by the name of Molt Taylor developed this. It's an aero car, and believe it or not, it actually does work. Now, the reason there's not an aero car in every garage, Molt Taylor says it's not practicality, but politics. <laughs> government regulation yeah. politics no way getting around those problems Molt Taylor tried to mass produce his aero car with Ford Motor Company 15 years ago but got tangled up in government red tape imagine thousands of these things buzzing over your backyard we went back to the transport uh, Department of Transportation in Washington DC with their attorneys and their lawyers, and we told them we want to build 25,000 flying automobiles. They said, ah, you can't do that. We said, why not? They said, well, because we don't want the sky full of them. But that didn't stop Molt Taylor, who's been tinkering around with several aircrafts over the years. He now has hopes of producing a kit that would convert a Honda CRX into an aero car. It's lightweight, carries to only two people, uh, lends itself structurally to the modification necessary to make it fly. Now, take a look at the commuter computer, an invention that promises to make accidents obsolete. It'll be much less risky than driving down a freeway because we'll have electronic anti-collision devices, <clears throat> we'll have warning devices, we'll have positive control over all the people in their, layer, in their layers of flying. Fred Barker is a former Boeing engineer who spent the last seven years developing a sky commuter. It's a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle similar to a helicopter. An onboard computer with sophisticated software will assist the pilot in landings and navigation. They won't tip over. The, the, the gyroscopes keep it level no matter what you do. You just can barely roll it and pitch oh, it. Handy. Yeah. And this button here? If you get in a panic situation, you push that and it flies itself. If you had the cash, you could buy yourself a brand new shiny Corvette. Or you could buy yourself one of these. Ideally, investors say you can plunk down 50 to 60 grand and roll one right off the lot as early as 1992. Wishful thinking? Maybe, and maybe not. This isn't a fly-by-night operation. No. no, we have some very heavy backing. Even though it may look a little fly-by-night. It'll fly-by-night. We'll put lights on it. <laughs> The Drug Enforcement Agency is investigating the Sky Commuter as a way to catch dope dealers. It's also pretty worried the traffickers themselves might find a use for the flying machine. The DEA guy said if, if anybody shows up with a suitcase full of $100 bills, let us know and we'll place a bug in his vehicle so we can track him. But then they'd find out about it and come after me with AK-47. No, this isn't a flying saucer from Mars. It's from Davis, California, the brainchild of former University of California professor of aeronautics, Paul Moeller. As a kid, Moeller was fascinated by the hummingbird, so he built a car that could hover like the bird. It sounds like dueling lawnmowers and looks an awful lot like something out of Buck Rogers. My ultimate goal is to produce a low-cost vertical take on landing aircraft that everybody can use. Driven by his vision, Moeller developed several aircraft, each closer to his dream. Unlike Fred Barker's Sky Commuter, the M300 is designed to go longer distances and you won't need a pilot's license to fly it. Hate to pop anybody's bubble, but as promising as flying cars might seem, so did this several years back. Remember the monorail? Quaint, but somehow it just didn't quite catch on. Here you see another type helicopter or direct lift air machine. And those futuristic flops? You remember the sky car? It's one that never quite got off the ground.
may be laughing now, but who has the last laugh? Just as sure as God made little green apples. You've got to have automobiles fly. It's a fantasy of everybody. Flying carpet, George Jetson. Everybody wants that ultimate freedom. Five years, these aircraft will be accepted as a means of transportation. In 10 years, they'll be fairly commonplace. In 20 years, they'll be everywhere. If you're not willing to wait for a flying car, Joe Oliver will be along next with some more down-to-earth ideas.